Bum, bum, ba, 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 bum, ba, bum. Welcome back, my friends. This is BJJ Brick. Quick, my name is Byron. Last episode, I told you about my first real experience with black belt jujitsu pressure. It was, <laughs> it was eye opening. Today, we're we're talking about how to apply that kind of pressure. And you're not going to be able to do what was done to me in in one day or by listening to a podcast or by watching a video or a series of videos. But we could walk you through a little bit of this. And, and sh- I'm going to share with you this concept that I've – when I teach how to apply pressure – from site control, this is the same concept I use, and most of it is, you know, talking. <laughs> With the end of it, feeling. <laughs> so, from site control, I much prefer to apply pressure to the rib cage. Now, you could apply pressure to the face, and that gets different things. But if you're wanting to uh, apply pressure to somebody to kind of slow them down and make them make mistakes. And, and that the, they're a little desperate to get out, this is a good way to go. So you're in sight control. We, If you're listening to a jiu podcast, you probably can visualize that. And you're going to turn your hips to face towards the top of your opponent, I guess towards their head. So kind of a Kasamatami style of sight control. Okay? And so now instead of my knees being one knee by their head and one knee being by their hip, I kind of have my my hip bone towards their side. And I'm going to put that hip bone in their, what's called the free floating ribs, or the floating ribs. I guess I, I don't know where the free came. The floating, so it's the bottom like three or four ribs. <laughs> I kind of looked this up before I started. It's the bottom few ribs. They're a little more springy and more flexible. And what we're not doing here is trying to break our training partners, our opponents' ribs. That's not at all a goal. We're going to affect their breathing <laughs> with this. So with your hip bone, you're going to – and it, after a few times of experiencing this from both sides, you're going you're gonna to push into their, their ribs, and you could feel them move. Now, granted, this may not work on people who are uh, like fairly overweight, but this – I've got this to work on – People who are quite a bit more overweight than me, I don't know what they're right. They have a little extra there to cushion. You can still feel their ribs uh, compress. So uh, try to make that contact. Try to feel their ribs as they as they kind of flex inward a little bit. And that's pushing their lungs in. So when you do that, what happens? Well, they get a little uh, – it's like pushing on a balloon. So you push on the close side – and a little bit of that stress is relieved on the other side. And so the other side, if I'm pushing with my right hip, I have my right elbow kind of digging into the, the far side of those floating ribs. And uh, push up against the ribs with the elbow and then squeeze and get like another inch or two and put your elbow back on the mat. And that will kind of provide an anchor point. And so now you've compressed both their left and right side of the ribs. <clears throat> and... You know, so when you compress a balloon like this, it kind of would pop upward. It certainly can't go down into the mats. So the 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 rib cage gets a little bit of a, a flex up, and so then you apply pressure to the top of that. <laughs> and so this is the the compressed balloon concept. And when you apply pressure to the top of that, it is super hard to take a breath. Now they're going to squirm and work their way to get an inch here or there, which makes it a lot easier to breathe. But this is the kind of thing that it, that last episode I talked about with Hanato was doing to me. He wasn't laying on my ribs. He wasn't laying on my chest. He was compressing my rib cage from both sides and then also putting pressure on the top of that, which made it impossible to catch a breath. Panic sets in. <laughs> so this is the uh, my favorite way to teach how to apply pressure because people want to just sprawl out and ribs, you know, chest to chest, and 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 move that way. And that's a fine way to 
kind of pin someone down, but you're not going to get that um, crazy amount of pressure that you cannot apply with just your body weight. This is how somebody who's 150 pounds could crush somebody like they're 250. It's all pinpointed into certain areas of the body. I'm not doing this to the rib cage. I'm doing it to the floating ribs, which are more flexible, which allow me to squeeze more. I don't apply the pressure on top until the, um, the, the rib cage is flexed upward a little bit, and then you squish onto that. And I guess you push onto that, I should say, with, um, with both your hips staying in place and your elbows staying in place. And so it's going to actually be um, the side of your rib cage will push on the top of their rib cage. You don't, you don't turn back to your knees um, to apply the pressure because that will let the pressure off the sides of the rib cage go. I hope this wasn't too descriptive visually. <laughs> but this is my favorite way to apply pressure from side control. I don't do it a lot. It, it is, it's kind of mean. <laughs> I did go through a phase where if you were significantly bigger than me, I wanted to tap you with this, this uh, pressure. And sure enough, it's, it's definitely the type of pressure that you can get someone to tap out from. If you can't breathe, first thing that happens is panic. Second thing that happens is they tap. <laughs> and uh, if the panic didn't, didn't present a better submission, which you have the privilege and ability to just ignore that and continue to apply pressure as they, you know, give their arms up or their neck or whatever, just continue to apply pressure and you can get a tap with this. But we'll talk about pressure being a submission or not uh, in a couple of days here. I got a little schedule here of pressure topics. But uh, good luck. I want you to give it a try, but don't be mean about it. Don't You shouldn't be smushing people who are a lot smaller than you, um, or you shouldn't be smushing them for the better part of the round. <laughs> Let them simmer for a little bit, see if that's just applied, see a little bit of panic, and then catch and release. So then you then you you know go for that submission or something like that. Don't be uh, the training part that nobody wants to roll with because you – you get this and you pressure for four minutes straight or even a minute's a long time. Hope you've enjoyed this podcast episode. If you want to support this show, go to bjbrick.com, click on the link to Patreon, or just go to Patreon, type in BJJ Brick, and you can support the show per month. Really appreciate that, my friends. Hope you have a great day today and stay sweaty.